Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and today we're going to talk about Visual Studio on C Sharp and AWS. How do you tie all those together? And especially if you're a Mac developer, you want to start doing C Sharp with AWS. How do you set it up from scratch? Okay, let's go ahead and dive in, and I'm going to go through step by step on how to make sure you have an AWS environment for your Mac C Sharp VS Code configuration. All right, so I have a Mac here, and this Mac machine is an M1 machine, in fact, and you can take a look at this. It's a 13-inch M1 2020, 16 gigs of RAM, really a very performant machine. And inside of here, I have Windows 11 running, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up Visual Studio, and I'm going to get it ready for developing with the AWS environment. So let's go ahead and dig into this. First up, uh, we'll go here and we'll go to Visual Studio Community. What's nice about this is it's a free version of Visual Studio and I don't have to necessarily uh, go up and, and use the professional version. All right, let's go ahead and let this install take place. Okay, so it's gonna ask us what we need to install here. And so I'll go ahead and install uh, some things like uh, ASP.NET, maybe a little bit of Python development here. Uh, desktop uh, and maybe mobile and uh, also potentially some un universal Windows platform development. Uh, this looks like uh, what I would probably need. Maybe some data science stuff that might be nice. Maybe some extensions and uh, I think this looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this install. What I can do is go to this set up the AWS toolkit window. You can see here that we need to have an account. We need to have a version of Windows or later, and then we can go through and we can install this Visual Studio uh, toolkit. So let's go ahead and uh, go here and go to AWS toolkit for Visual Studio 2022. Here we go, let's download it. All right, now that we've got this thing downloaded, we're gonna open up the installer and get this installed. Okay, so here we are at getting started with the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. Okay, we're in Visual Studio now and I have the AWS Toolkit installed. And what's really nice is the way that I can succinctly look at the entire AWS ecosystem. You could even argue that in fact, this is a better experience than some of the features of the console in the web browser for AWS. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few things you can do. For example, I can go here and I could right click launch an instance. That could really be handy. For example, if I go through here and I launch instance, notice it that I could go through and launch for example, Windows uh, Server, which might be something I'm gonna do in a little bit if I wanted to potentially develop inside of a Windows machine and do a remote desktop uh, connection to it. Now, also, I could look at the, the current running instances as well, which, which is kind of neat. I don't have anything running. Uh, these are all stopped, but I could control them. Uh, also, I could look at all the buckets that I have, right? With This is pretty handy, and even inspect what's inside of one of these buckets. and also, what's, what's pretty neat here is that if I go to AWS Lambda, notice that here's a Lambda function that I've got set up here that does uh, uh, some communication with S3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a request by first going through here and getting a sample payload. Let's go down here and just get a Hello World uh, example. And I just tweak it a little bit, right? So we know that it's going to have... Uh, the payload that I'm particularly looking for, uh, I remember what it uh, is like, and it's going to want uh, a name and then some kind of value. And I'm going to put in here three. Uh oh, it says it's looking for number, not name. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put number in here, and let's go ahead and do it. Again, pretty good debugging process. There we go. And now you can see the log output, and this is actually invoking this remotely on AWS. And I could, if I wanted to, do a JSON pretty print and, re and, and look at the, the result. Now, if I go to a Marco Polo function, this might one might be a little bit cleaner. Uh, I, again, can go through here and look at all the different payloads, right? And, and so what I'm going to do in this example 
is I'm going to put in the brackets again, and I'm going to say, uh, for example, uh, name, and then do Marco, and let's see what happens. Uh, I'll go ahead and run this, and we can see here that it passed this in, and uh, we can see that this response back here was Polo. So I can fully interact with this environment in AWS from inside of Visual Studio without even needing to log into the console. So this is one way to be productive, especially if you've already had .NET code running in production. The other thing you can do if we go to new is we can go ahead and create a new uh, project. And then notice here, uh, I did some filtering. I looked for C Sharp AWS Cloud projects. And here we go, we can see that these are different projects I could scroll through. Look, a, a C Sharp project for creating an AWS Lambda function. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and select that. And we can call this, um, you know, hello. Uh, and if I go through here, I can create this. And then it gives me a few different options here. What do I want to do? Do I want to create an empty function? Do I, do I want to detect image labels with recognition? You know, what, are, what is the thing I want to do here? I'm going to go ahead and, and select the empty function and then go ahead and uh, finish. And then you'll see that it, it'll populate my environment here with a full C Sharp project that's set up for Lambda. And then I could deploy this project if I wanted to into that cloud based environment. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. There you go. You can see my C Sharp code. And then from here again, uh, once I'm done with this Hello World project, uh, I can go through and I can deploy it to production. So a lot to like about the Visual Studio C Sharp AWS uh, interface here. And it works reasonably well with an M1. It's a little bit sluggish because of the ARM based, uh, you know, parallelization is, is not great, uh, but uh, it's functional and it's a good place to start if you're beginning to develop on a Mac.